r slash r credit by redmond dts what was the scariest we need to leave now gut feeling that you've ever experienced my brother and i were kids playing hide and seek in the front yard of our house my brother was three and i was six my brother was supposed to be counting and finding me but he was taking forever so i peeked around the side of the house to see what was taking so long he had lost interest in the game and was standing near the front gate which led to the street as i'm looking i see a brown car pull up with two men inside the car wasn't familiar and neither were the men they both got out of the car and approached my brother they started asking him questions and moving closer to him. I remember feeling panicked. I had learned about stranger danger in school and knew this wasn't right. I ran around the side of the house, flew through the back door, and screamed, someone is trying to kidnap Steve. My dad didn't hesitate. He got up and flew through the front door. When the men saw my dad coming through the door, they bolted and peeled out. From that day forward, we weren't allowed to play in the front yard anymore. It's a really scary memory for me. Doesn't I need to go home now feeling count? And it wasn't me, but my mom. Anyway, I was around 12 or so, and my mom left to run an errand, leaving me alone. Very soon after she left, the dawn bell rang. This was weird, because we lived on a hill with only two neighbors, we all kept to ourselves, and we just didn't get random visitors. Thanks to some conveniently placed picture frames, I could see out the door without being seen. I look out, and see a young man I don't recognize. He's dressed in a t-shirt and jeans and something just feels off. So I ignore him, and wait for him to leave. But he doesn't. He lingers and starts smoking. Again, this is an isolated hill, I'm alone, and now I'm getting scared. I go and hide and plan to wait for my mom. Except she just left, had a few errands to run, and I couldn't reach the phone without the guy seeing me. As I'm trying to figure out what to do, my mom comes home. She runs in and asks if I'm okay. Apparently she got this random go home now urge. She hadn't even run her first errand, yet but turned around immediately. Found the guy in our yard, and asked what he needed. I guess he muttered something about looking for someone, or something to that effect, and my mom told him to leave. Apparently he was acting very strangely, and made my mom nervous. To this day I have no idea what he wanted, and no idea how my mom knew to come home. But I'm very grateful she did. Me and my little sister went camping in the woods very close to our house, when we were kids. We'd seen this bald guy with a blue shirt and a dog walking around, which isn't unusual for the area, you'll often see people walking and say hello. For some reason though, I just got this tight feeling in my chest, and my sister must have too, because we both just gave each other this look. I don't know what it was that made me do it, this is very out of character for me, but I took a photo of the back of him as he was walking away. A while later, we see the same guy again near the lake. He comes over, and asks about the tent we are carrying, where we'll be setting up, and are we camping with our dad. We say yes, we are just going to see him now, a lie. We must have had the same moment of psychicness, because we walked off up a fork in the path until we were out of view, then looked at each other, and jumped down a path hidden by the bushes, and waited behind them on the parallel trail for a bit. The guy watched us walk off, pretended to play with his dog, until he couldn't see us, then turned around, and ran up the path after us. Thankfully he didn't see us hidden and carried on up straight where he thought we'd gone. We decided camping was a bad idea and went home. That evening my mum shows us a post in the local residence group, which is a picture of the same bald guy trying to break into someone's house. Apparently he'd just been walking around trying people's front doors, and claimed to be a repair guy, when he was stopped. I dread to think what his intentions were, but it was very lucky me, and my sister knew those woods so well, otherwise we wouldn't have thought to go down one of the hidden paths. I was at a family gathering basically a reunion, but just for family within reasonable driving distance, probably 30 people altogether. 
It was at County Park on a small lake with some grills and buildings, just an empty hall with some picnic tables inside, you could rent for this kind of stuff. The sky started darkening as a storm was approaching, all the coolers, chairs, balls and other kids toys etc were brought into the building anticipating the rain. The plan was to wait it out, since afternoon showers are common just about every day in the summer. Something in the air didn't feel, or smell, right even though it appeared to be just a regular afternoon storm. Hair on my neck was standing up, and I was in full flight mode. Can't really decide it, the feeling in the pit of my stomach can only be described as absolute dread. I told my wife to take my daughter, and get in the car. My brother-in-law, took one look at my face, and said what's wrong, apparently I was white as a ghost. It wasn't even raining yet and I was full on panic yelling for everyone to leave, something isn't right. No one else was that worried, mostly concerned with how I was acting. I went out to the car, and as soon as I was about to turn the key the tornado sirens went off. We were not far from wherever they put those, or they are just stupidly loud, because it was deafeningly loud. Now the rest of the family is pouring out of the building to their cars, kids crying, and I look across the lake maybe a few miles in the distance, and see a funnel cloud. Got the hell out of there, as did everyone else. The building we had rented for this family barbecue thing was completely annihilated. Literally just a slab of concrete and a ton of debris all around. It was hit dead on by an EF3. Wednesday midday run along a beautiful river pathway near my apartment block. About 1 km in I felt people watching me and directly turned around and ran home, even though I did not see anybody. Close to the two magnetic gates leading up to my door and didn't see anybody around or follow me. About 10 minutes later two guys were at my front door trying to push it in. I was luckily on the other side of the door at that moment and pushed it back closed with all my force and began screaming. I managed to security lock the front door and text my apartment block for help. I was on the second floor and they obviously watched which apartment I went into. Looking back at the apartment's security cameras they were able to see the two guys pull apart the magnetic security gates, two of them. The block then quickly changed the gates to a mechanic lock that cannot be pulled apart. I bartend and years ago I kicked this guy out because he was acting very strange, muttering under his breath that he would kill my other customers, just really hostile. He had missing fingers on one hand and he was kind of a bigger guy. After bar close I was almost finished counting money, so like an hour after everyone left and I was just about to leave and I had that gut feeling. I looked out the window and that guy was standing on the corner watching me in a ski mask. I know it was him because of the build. As soon as I grabbed my phone he took off, but the cops know who he is. Now he has a vendetta out against me and he's well known around town. He's freaking nuts. I was freshly married in my early 20s, living in Fallbrook, California. My ex-husband was a marine and was at work and I was driving home from visiting family further south. In order to get into Fallbrook you have to travel along this long dark and windy street called Mission Road. It's already a super dark night, about 11pm, and it's a little foggy as well. I'm slowing down and coming around this slight bend in the road and all of a sudden the hair goes up on my neck and I feel incredibly anxious. About 5 seconds later, a young woman jumps out of the brush directly ahead of me, maybe 50 feet away, on the left hand side of the road, while waving her arms in the air and gesturing frantically for me to pull over. I swerved a bit to the right, slowing down even further, but I did not stop. She was young, maybe early 20s or even late teens, and a little dirty, and I was immediately conflicted over continuing to drive. But something told me not to stop under any circumstances. I got further up the road, slowed a little more, and dialed 911 with one shaky hand. The dispatcher said she'd send someone to check, but encouraged me not to feel badly. Apparently there had already been calls about this girl over the last hour, and they were unable to find her when police followed up. I heard a few weeks later about some carjacking robbery attempts in the area. Very relieved I listened to my instincts that night. 
I was at the state fair with my mom and my best friend. Friend and I were looking at the rides and the games. This creepy guy and his blonde girlfriend kept babbling at us about taking headshots and that he was a modeling agent. He just seemed off and really sleazy and the girl was giving me the creeps, so I pretended that I saw my mom telling us to come and grabbed my friend and dragged her off. She was close to 5 foot 8 and not a small girl, 13 years old, I was 4 foot 9 and around 65 pounds at 14 years old. A few days later, there's a news story and rumors going around the school about two girls being kidnapped, assaulted, and murdered. They were taken from the fair the same day we were there, just few hours later. The creepy couple were Gerald and Charlene Gallagher's serial killers. I stopped by a friend's house to watch a ball game. He, his wife and I were just relaxing and someone knocked on the door. It was the middle of the afternoon, he opened it up, he was expecting others might come by also. I hear him greeting someone, the guy was his brother I had never met, but had heard about. Very sketchy looking guy, meth teeth scrawny long greasy hair, my friend had told me that he had a brother who lived in the area who had a serious drug problem. Buddy is talking to his brother about nothing, and the guy gets a call on his cell. Whoever called, all he told them was, not yet, I'll call you later. Seems pretty obvious this guy has come to rob, and most likely to take out witnesses. I look at my buddy, it seems he has come to the same conclusion. Now my buddy's wife is a no-nonsense type of woman, sweet, but athletic, on the tall side, she had left the room, to go to the bathroom, or so she said. She comes back in the room with a handgun. I'm thinking what the f did I walk into, but she calmly says, Ron, you're strung out and came here with bad intentions, you need to quietly leave, if you get any ideas, Chris, their son, is sitting outside in his truck, to make sure you go. Ron doesn't say a word, he just turn, and goes out the door, we can hear his old pickup drive away rapidly. Chris come in and says, he's gone, I don't think he's coming back. They ask me to leave, so they can decide what to do, they have already called the police, who are well acquainted with Ron. The next morning my buddy calls me, the police said they found his brother in the trailer park where he lived, murdered with multiple gunshots. They are guessing he was in serious drug debt, and had come to rob his brother. I told my buddy I was sorry, he said don't be. I was in Taco Bell with my daughter, and I saw a guy come in and back out with a t-shirt over his hand. I told her to dump the tray and get moving. We went out to the car quickly and left. Found out later on the news that the guy robbed the place with the gun hiding under his t-shirt. Years ago, before cell phones, I was driving home from dropping my husband at the train at 4.30am. Only me and one other car on the road. He started turning where I turned twice, so I didn't go home. I went to an all night gas station and called the police. I gave them a description of his car. Three weeks later, he was arrested. Turns out he was following women home and driving past their house and doubling back to rape them. No one had noticed his car. I'm glad I paid attention. Standing outside my friend's house watering their garden while they were away on vacation. Not even 30 seconds after I shut the door and locked it, about 6 men started pounding on the door, reaching in the mail slot trying to unlock said door, telling me to come out, and calling me QT and other degrading pet names. Sitting in my friend's backyard with their two kids, my husband, and another friend, enjoying pizza that my host made. It was a beautiful, clear day with no real wind. We are having a great time, just out of the pool and hungry for pizza, when I suddenly felt on edge. I looked straight at the kids, about 8 and 10 or so years old, and just said get in the house. We all scramble and a second later we heard creaking, and maybe 5 seconds after it started, this big branch fell off of their pine tree onto the table, where we were sitting. Thankfully no one was hurt besides having to pick pine needles out of our pizza. I can only assume that I subconsciously heard the branch starting to give. I was hammock camping while riding my motorcycle through Arkansas. I had a dream 
that I was jet and pulled over by the cops on my bike. The flashing lights were super bright in my eyes. And as I woke from my dream I noticed my blue hammock tent is lighting up like flashing police lights. I immediately felt an adrenaline spike and went into full flight mode. Pack my stuff up faster than I could even put my boots on. Hopped on my bike in my underwear and rode a mile to the top of the campground where the showers were. The second I stepped into the shower cabin the sky opened up and cloud to ground lighting started striking trees in the campground every 10, 15 seconds. I could have been royally messed up by a lightning strike had I stayed sleeping between two of them. I was scuba diving in Asia. Three of us went to a reef that hadn't been dived on before, which bottomed out at 50, 70 meter depth. Five minutes into the dive, we all get a very bad feeling, like we were being watched. Ignored it but the feeling wouldn't go away. Further 10 minutes into the dive, we all watched the silhouette of a white shark glide slowly past, right on the periphery of where we could see. Then glide back in the other direction a minute later. The decompression stop to get out was the scariest 3 minutes of my life. I was walking down the street in a very unfamiliar city with a group of friends. I got this feeling and didn't know how to articulate it, so I said to the group, hey I've got to use the restroom, can we just duck inside this subway real quick? I promise I'll be quick. About a minute later there was a shootout just up the block. If we wouldn't have gone into the restaurant, we would have been standing right in the middle of the incident waiting to cross the street. Years ago when I was still living at home with the parents, I drove home around 2am. As I parked my car I noticed a man walking down the street. I decided to wait until he passed my car and was far enough for me to get out. However, instead he passed my car and hid behind the van that was directly parked behind me. I guess he did not think I was paying attention to him. So I called my dad who was asleep to come down and get me. He did and when the guy saw my dad he immediately ran away. I was lucky. I've had a few over the years. Rememberable ones are when in the woods with my one year old picking up pine cones, it was about 4pm on a summer's day so still light and warm. Anyway suddenly this mixed feeling of dread and fear and of being watched came over me. I just picked him up and ran. The next day on our local community Facebook group another mother reported that her and her two little girls had been flashed at in the woods and quite aggressively. Another one was I was heavily pregnant, I'd went to a Hindu just for the meal and then was going home. I was about to call a taxi when the bride insisted the limo she hired drop me home. I thought it was a funny idea for my husband to see me get home in a limo so I agreed. The driver seemed fine with it and was a nice chatty guy. We are driving home when suddenly he starts detouring, we are by the docks and he starts pulling into some dodgy ass car park. Not saying a word to me. I called my husband right away and very loudly told him the situation and where I was and that I'd be home in 10 minutes. The driver made some excuse about picking something up from a friend, disappeared for 5 minutes and then took me home. I'm convinced he had bad intentions, and to this day the regret and pure fear and feeling freaking stupid will never ever leave me. Ladies we are never safe. Never presume you are. When I was a kid, the neighbor across the street offered me a ride to school when he saw me walking and said he'd give me candy too. It felt off, so I just said no thanks and kept walking, thinking nothing of it. Maybe a year later, he shot and killed his wife and then himself. I was walking on the beach with my partner in a country with a pretty high crime rate, and a shady dude with one of the scariest facial expressions I've ever seen started to follow us for almost 10 minutes, and as soon as I saw a bus full of tourists we jumped right on it. For sure that dude was either rob or kidnap us. I exited a metro station about two decades ago, and the parking lot had a small area behind bushes where I parked. As I headed into the parking lot I saw two guys standing between a row of cars, which looked out of place. They were watching me to see where I was going. I decided to walk right toward them, and they moved off some, then I walked to my car, and drove away. 
I glanced back to see them heading back for the bushy spot. They killed a woman shortly there after who was parked in that bushy area. When I was walking home age 7 and a man asked me to help him find his puppy. I felt pure fear and adrenaline and said, I can't, I have to get home, sorry. I've never sprinted so fast in my life. I remind my kids of this often, an adult with good intentions will never ask a kid for help. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this one, why not like and subscribe for more. Have a nice evening.